data is at the center, but uh, not all innovation is only about data. We, we have with you, Mehdi, a very good example of a breakthrough uh, solution that can save life. Can you tell us more about yeah, thank you. Just, just a minute on what my colleagues just said, which is really interesting and totally follow the idea which I believe is shared here, that how much data is about sovereignty and from a health space, how much uh, civil society has to be engaged on those kind of topics. And we had last year a huge uh, initiative, which is really fine to get a huge health data hub, which is uh, a way to centralize the health data. And we were that close to host the data in a cloud, which is yes. a Microsoft cl cloud. Uh, which means that, yeah, uh, the, the civil society rose uh, against the situation and then hopefully we, there, there were uh, some kind of step back of the government, which is a, a cool thing. Yeah, so sovereignty is a very uh, sensitive, sensitive subject and civil society can be amazing. And when it's engaged and it's part of our history, what we're doing is ECOPEN. Ecomen basically is an ultrasound handheld device connected to any kind of smartphone. And the idea is to make what we say orientation diagnosis, which means basically to answer the basic questions of any kind of medical doctors meeting any kind of patients anywhere in the world. The two questions are what organ are image? Is the condition serious or not? And bringing the, the site to the medical doctors in, in order to see inside the body is really critical to answer those two questions. Uh, it started out like Farouk, by personal experience, I was a young resident and I had to deal with two patients dying in the condition of that moment where to get it to a ultrasound device was really, really difficult. And at that time, I had this random idea of uh, connecting uh, an ultrasound device, made it really handheld, and uh, take advantage of the uh, computing power of the smartphones. And basically, you know, I'm not a manufacturer, so it was kind of idea. And I'm really onto the open source space to uh, bring commons. Maybe you will elaborate on this. Uh, and with a few person, we started to say, okay, let's do it and let's make it accessible, meaning that let's make it really cheap for that it can diffuse uh, heavily. And what is at stake in this kind of technology is very important and there is an intense competitive landscape, mainly led, mm -hmm. by the way, by US and China. And this kind of technology is expected as the stethoscope of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So it's really critical. And we started with a community five years ago and the community kept growing. Uh, we reached something like 1,000 people supporting or contributing to the project. And uh, we, we are at the final step. We're uh, waiting for the CE mark. We made the device. We industrialized the device, uh, really with the help of a community. And I find it's quite interesting matter of how uh, open innovation can flow, like Wikipedia thing, uh, adapted to the hardware space. Especially in, uh, in the health space where uh, we couldn't say, you know, it's the most advanced uh, adopter of uh, open innovation. And I must say that, um, I mean, the, the Capgemini support yeah. to uh, the industrialization step from POC to, uh, uh, to uh, industrialization is important. And you're about exactly. to launch uh, your product soon. So uh, what's the importance of the data collection in, in uh, uh, in your device? So your data is critical because data brings to AI and AI brings to more powerful tool to, to make uh, diagnosis and also to empower people. And maybe one day, since ultrasound are really non-invasive, non-dangerous, everybody will be uh, using this. And I, I know some startups in Israel going to, towards mm. this direction. So definitely data is very important. Uh, above our situation, I think that the health space uh, uh, has giants of data, which are the hospitals. And you know, the GAFAs are the giants of overall data, but for the health space, I think hospital has really uh, uh, their, their word to say. And we're some kind of special thing where we have this community. We brought out, out of this community a startup. And in the startup, we have the APHP, which is Assistance Publique des Hôpitaux de Paris, which is actually the largest uh, hospital group in Europe and one of the large, largest in the world. And they had a lot of data flowing. And so 
what we're about to do now is to build up an ecosystem where the data entering in the hospital can be uh, brought uh, to, to the ultrasound space and we can uh, build uh, algorithms, powerful algorithms out of it. And I, I think this is a good example of how public and private sector can um, work together, definitely. Absolutely. So uh, it seems that there is now a convergence on the fact that uh, health data is sensitive data across uh, the globe. And uh, Clément, uh, you just published uh, with IFRI a paper, a position paper on uh, healthcare data uh, governance. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. One of the main takeaways of the study is that the pandemic has revealed the strategic importance of for states to um, understanding and controlling um, health data uh, to face a major public health crisis. Um, the fact is we were not ready uh, to face this crisis and we have to move, the, the main lesson is we have to move uh, toward a data-driven uh, model to uh, um, manage public health crisis. Um, there was no interoperability between European uh, states and even within uh, European states, in Germany, in France as well. So it's a critical point. Um, but it was true in Europe uh, and it was true as well in China and in the US. Um, so uh, no one actually was ready. The other key takeaway um, from the study is security. During the COVID-19 crisis, um, cyber attacks on uh, healthcare facilities and hospitals have intensified, it's becoming massive. And um, with the digitiza digitization of healthcare, um, we may face in the years to come a, a real digital Pearl Harbor. That means with casualties in the real world. I think it happened last year in Germany yes. with the Hamburg Hospital. Uh, a woman died uh, after a cyber attack, so it's not science fiction, it's happening. And um, the committee, the International Committee of the Red Cross launched a call to uh, the government to regulate uh, and prevent cyber attacks on healthcare facilities, so it's a critical issue. And the, the last um, key takeaway from the, the study, even if it may be too early to say, is that the COVID-19 crisis could have been a catalyst for convergence between um, global data regulation models toward the EU's GDPR standards. For example, China enacted a comprehensive data protection law uh, a couple of weeks ago, so it's a major step uh, forward. And as, as far as the US is concerned, because you know it, it, in the US uh, you, have sec you have specific regulations, you have a regulation of, on health data, financial data, and so on and so forth. And Joe Biden, who is very much interested in, in the subject of health data, because he gave a, a big speech um, three years ago on health data, so he, he knows the, the topic very well. Uh, he may face the pressure from the Democratic Party and the left of the Democratic Party to uh, enact a comprehensive uh, data protection law. And he may face the pressure from also from his uh, European allies, because you may remember um, the Privacy Shield was the, the framework of exchange of data exchange between um, the US and, and Europe has been cancelled by the, the European Court of Justice. So it's data protection has become and health data protection has become a subject in uh, the transatlantic relation. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, that's definitely where the core of uh, uh, many hot topics. And uh, for sure, uh, I was mentioning at the start, uh, innovation is raising uh, public attention from the, the public governments uh, and uh, startups in particular. As startups, what would you say are the uh, challenges and opportunities, particularly in the GovTech that you see? Mehdi. Okay, so I'm not a regular startupper, let's say this way, yeah. since uh, when I started the project, it was not about really to build a startup, but to build some device and to take advantage of all the ecosystem. What I can advocate on is uh, how much interesting is the fact that you can create an innovative space where several 
part of the society can interact. You have the public institutions, the academic labs, who are deep knowledge, low-level knowledge on uh, technologies, and, and you have uh, obviously uh, companies like uh, uh, Capgemini who helped us, uh, Group Sanofi who helped us, uh, other uh, big industries that helps us mature the, the, to, to, to become a product. And we have this really fertile, very engaged civil society where uh, actually they want, to, they are very dedicated to what they do, they have an amazing energy. And, and I think this is the third space where you can bring an amazing value and this value can be converted into a company. Then at the end, it becomes a, a, a startup. But I think we should really be aware of how people want to contribute. And maybe I can say something like beyond our special case is about the commons. Uh, we released a lot of technology in open source and the idea is not to make depend the technology to a proprietary company or proprietary government or whatever in order this uh, breaks of basic technology stuffs could be available to anybody and they can build uh, uh, I don't know lectures for universities and they can build startups out out of it and maybe from a more political standpoint uh, I think a lot of countries are experiencing the same thing that you know that all these micro communities advocating for themselves and what is the common ground of everybody? And I think in this kind of innovative space, you can have this idea of, okay, we all are engaged in a way in our, uh, as citizens uh, on special topics, but we can also bring together commons. And, and I think that it's one of the key of the future. Collective approach to knowledge and Definitely. knowledge sharing. Knowledge Absolutely. sharing is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Baruch? Yeah, maybe from, because work with core governments, right? Uh, a perspective on, on that point. Um, I think you're looking at the, the tech markets that we have, comparing it to fintech and, and uh, maybe e-commerce, which was the beginning of all of this. We lost more, almost all of the battles, right? The monopolies are somewhere else. They're in China, they're in the US. So I think government technology is a chance where the battle is not yet over. And uh, Europe's governments are very rich, they're very um, extensive, they provide a lot of services. If we manage to provide good solutions there and also scale them across Europe, like that, that's a chance to gain some, in the bottom line, save our sovereignty, because otherwise, I mean, Azure, you talked about that. I mean, the German government postpones the decision to update that from legislative period to period because no one wants to face that decision, but it's coming now. It's getting urgent. So on the bottom line, save our digital sovereignty. And the best case, export this to other countries with the privacy by design that we can implicate into our products, right? And to make that happen, I think first, we need to stop in Europe because we need this large market to say, French cities, French products, German cities, mm. German products, Spanish cities, Spanish startup products. So we need to make a market for that. We need data sharing standards. Uh, we need VCs that understand this and governments that actually see the benefit first in European products, but also in startups in general. You know, there is good use, um, of course, of big companies. There's uh, security. You can also blame them if something fails, like startup, if you don't know if in three years they're existing and you can't rely on the contract, but I think we need to be a bit, a bit bolder with the challenges we are facing and uh, embrace this. And I think then we can maybe win this challenge. Yeah. Um, no, definitely, what you're raising is, is the notion of, uh, of scale, right? And we see uh, uh, American startups uh, benefit from the scale uh, of the continent, second, from the depth of their uh, industry and the sophistication of the network uh, starting from business angels all the way to uh, private equity. Um, what we experience uh, with our large clients when it comes to B2, B2B solutions, i.e. Uh, business to business uh, solutions, addressing the corporate market of tier one, um, they, they, they did embrace open uh, innovation for years now. What they're looking forward to now is uh, adoption at scale. And adoption at scale means uh, not only the, um, the SaaS solution plug and play, but very often the downside effect in terms of um, how to interface that and rationalize their legacy systems, what impact does that have on their processes and on the organization, which in public sector would be the governance, right? Organization and governance. The entire value chain 
of the way um, they work. Uh, so that, that's important, and, and the Capgemini and the peers have a role to play in helping their large clients adopt, select of course, but also adopt at scale startup solutions. If we want uh, champions of tomorrow to be also uh, European and uh, from Asia, we need this to be rooted into the economic uh, environment uh, and, and the corporates have absolutely a role to play. Uh, so thank you for your insight, this is, this is interesting. Mm -hmm.